Well, howdy there, Internet people. Let's bow again. So today we are going to talk about Meadows and two questions about Meadows and the whole attempt to have it removed from Georgia and go federal. Um, at time of filming, looks like Meadows' team has put their final argument forward. The judge has not reached a decision, at least one that is public yet. So... We don't actually know anything yet. But the two questions are pretty simple and they're worth going over. So the first one is how could it not be federal? He, he was in a federal position. How could that federal immunity not apply? Okay. Sometimes when you're looking at something, it, it makes sense to take it to the absurd and then bring it back to reality to kind of illustrate something. And that's what we're going to do today. Um, so for his argument to be successful, what he was doing had to be in the scope of his duties. You don't get to have federal immunity simply because you have a federal job. Whatever it was had to be done as part of that job. So to give you an absurd completely unrelated example of how that would work. Let's say you work for the IRS and you're doing an audit and they come to the office and everybody's sitting around and the person you're auditing says something about your mom and you hit them in the head with a brick. You do not have federal immunity from that. That is not in the scope of your duties, right? Absurd example. Totally absurd exam example, but it shows where that line is pretty clearly. It has to be something that you're doing as part of your job. Now, in the case with Meadows, federal employees in the executive branch are not supposed to engage in political activity. They're not supposed to try to influence an election. Um, the way the district attorney's office put it, federal law prohibits employees of the executive branch from engaging in political activity in the course of their work. Okay. That's the Hatch Act. So if you were calling, trying to find votes, that's not within the scope of your, uh, your duties. A more specific example would be, according to the indictment anyway, Meadows contacted Georgia and asked if there was, uh, quote, a way to speed up Fulton County signature verification in order to have results before January 6th if the Trump campaign assist financially. That doesn't seem like that's a, a federal thing. That doesn't seem like it's within the scope of the duties, right? So that's where the prosecution argument is going to come from. It's probably not helpful that Meadows has described the Hatch Act, which is the law that prohibits, you know, all of that. Uh, he described it once as a uh, law that, quote, nobody outside the Beltway really cares about. That's probably not good. Um, so that's what they're trying to determine, is what he was doing, what he is alleged to have done in Georgia, if that was within the scope of his duties as an employee of the federal government. If it was, it gets removed to federal court. If it wasn't, well, it stays where it is because he's throwing a brick at somebody. That, that's kind of how that works. Um, and again, we, we don't know how that's going to play out yet. And then the other question had to do with the magic. <laughs> um, and it was basically like, hey, you know, over on the other channel, the, the last Roads Not Taken episode, you said the hearing was coming. Be ready for some surprises, particularly about who gets called to testify. And then today, there was a surprise witness, Meadows himself. 
The question is, how did I know that? Because all of the legal experts were saying he wasn't going to do it. Uh, because they were all giving their best advice. Um, throughout, when we've been talking about this, I've said a couple of times that pretty much every lawyer I've talked to said that it might not have actually been the best idea to try to have the case removed to federal court. And one of the reasons they believed that is because in order to make that case, you have to testify. You have to get up there and explain it. Nobody else is going to be able to explain how that was within the scope of your duties. You would have to do it. And since most defense attorneys are like, never testify, they view it as a bad thing. They went on and just carried that through. One of the reasons they thought it was a bad move to try to remove it was because he was going to have to testify. But once that started and they were going to remove it and that was the, the way they were trying to go with it, the rest of their advice was, I mean, if you're going to do that, you have to testify. They made the assumption that he was going to try to do it without testifying. When all of them were like, if you're going to go that route, you're going to have to get on the stand. And that's a bad idea. So I made the assumption that Meadows would try to make the case because it's that important to him. His belief, I'm pretty sure, is that if he can get it removed, he can get it thrown out. So it, it's taking the risk now and getting on the stand now. Um, and it, it's funny, yeah, the, the magic was that I listened to what the, the legal experts were saying. Um, and just, they, they didn't follow it through, you know. You don't want to do this because you'll have to testify. But once he started doing it, their advice said he was going to because it's the only way you can make the case. Um, but most of them were like, nobody's that arrogant. Nobody would be that dumb, you know. <laughs> but they're moving forward with it. So that's it. There, there's no magic. It's the same thing. Listen to people who know what they're talking about. <laughs> um, again, we don't know how this is going to play out yet. And there will be, there are going to be more hearings like this for other people, certainly. Um, I don't even know when a decision is supposed to be public about this yet. So I will uh, keep y'all informed as I do. Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good day.